सर इन इंडिया एजुकेशनल आउटकम्स ओवरऑल इज वेरी पुअर नॉट ऑप्टिमल बट इट्स वेरी एविडेंट इन ह्यूमैनिटीज रादर दैन साइंसेस सो वाई डू यू थिंक दिस इज हैपनिंग सी एटलीस्ट इन साइंसेस इन जनरल नो वी आर वेटी सोशलिस्ट इन दिस रेस्पेक्ट वी मेस्ट अप एवरीवेयर आवर एजुकेशन इज अ डिजास्टर लेट्स मी फर्स्ट स्टेट दैट our self images that we are very educated people we have our sundar pichai or sachan adalla or others doing supremely well many multinationals and at the top level our people are uh, occupying those positions all this is true but in a very large country with a small elite education if some people flourish globally it's not an axis it's not a surprise but what's happening to the bulk of our children is what's important i can say without serious fear of contradiction roughly about 95% of our children 95% of our children in the country they are hopelessly below global standards at school level i am saying this with great deal of sense of responsibility and deliberately i am not misspeaking 95% of the kids in schools in india are hopelessly below global standards 1% are as good as global 5% are a little close maybe another 10 15% they are below global standards but with some effort and some hard work and some encouragement and opportunity probably they can survive sort of survive but 80% have no chance at all their education is so flawed it's not education it's a misnomer it's a myth that applies to sciences mathematics language humanities first let us get that clear within that is much worse in humanities why at least sciences and language at least to the extent of english english is of course terrible on the whole but sciences there are global standards even if your inputs are very bad you can always rely you know if your parents pay some attention your school is a little more progressive if your teacher is is much more concerned about you then there is a global knowledge being created and science is global universal there is no indian science there is no chinese science there is no american science therefore even if there are deficiencies in the system with a bit of effort you can hopefully improve the quality at least some of the professional courses not all colleges but at least some of the better colleges because there is a universality to science humanities while there are some broader principles applicable to all of human kind in reality they are situation specific they are applicable to your society when you are not generating knowledge in your country and there is almost no serious r&d in india whether sciences or humanities when you are not generating enough knowledge here when there are no professional institutions banking on global knowledge created and therefore it is imparting some of it to us humanities are even worse off and there is a third issue the world no longer divides knowledge into humanities and uh, uh, basic sciences in the basic sciences world no longer divides that into physical sciences and natural sciences everything is now related to everything else a lot of medicine is now engineering biophysics biomedical engineering and chemistry biochemistry without biochemistry there is no modern medicine and genetics is actually a molecular level chemistry so even healthcare which is the most applied science most important applied science perhaps in, uh, in modern humanity you cannot really say it's only natural science so like that in an interdisciplinary world humanities are very much meshed with scientific disciplines to the extent that they are applicable to enhancing the human welfare and improving the quality of life you cannot really separate and so there is an all round challenge humanities even more so because we are in we have we have so far been somewhat incapable of generating new knowledge and we are not able to establish benchmarks and standards relevant to our society as opposed to sciences where there is a global benchmark and global generation of knowledge but in general both school education and higher education in india right now is in a perilous state and the people cannot be blamed because there is enormous demand for education in this country the kids cannot be blamed they work very hard the amount of stress indian kids go through they are comparable to the most stressed uh, kids in the world in education so it's not the parents of the kids it's not even the governments in the broad sense that governments are spending humongous sums of money some people very casually cavalierly say if only you spend 6% of gdp 
and mm-hmm. education things will improve. No, it's not absolute nonsense. There are states which are spending 80 to 90 thousand rupees per child per year on school education, which is a phenomenal sum of money. So it's not spending money, and the outcomes are as bad as the fellows who are spending 30 thousand rupees. So while well, more money is welcome, that is not the real challenge. The challenge is that we have to fundamentally change the pedagogy and fundamentally focus on the outcomes rather than the inputs and define the outcomes better, define success better and measure it honestly and intelligently. And until we get it right, the Indian children will not get what they deserve and the Indian nation will not prosper because without skills, what is modern economy? If you know only how to dig a pit and fill a pit, that was okay for 10,000 years during the agriculture revolution. Even that I don't think our kids know. If you, ask, if you put them to agriculture, I don't think they know how to plow the land, how to dig the earth and how to fill the pit. Even that they don't know. So they know neither that nor this. For no fault of theirs. And millions of children, their future is devastated. Their future is determined by the circumstances of birth, not by the talent given by nature or not by the hard work they're willing to put in. It's a tragedy, a monumental tragedy enveloping us. And I think this is the most important challenge facing us, but easily correctable because demand side is very strong. Very, very strong, unlike many other countries. Indian families, Hindu or Muslim, rich or poor, urban or rural, upper caste, lower caste, they're all willing to die for their children's future. They're spending, spending disproportionate sums to give them an advantage in terms of education. So the society values it. If only we do a few things right, we can transform education very quickly. And that is the most important need right now in the country. It is a fact that the like education in general and humanities in particular is relatively better in the West. So like the government allowing the foreign universities to set up their campuses in India, will it improve the outcomes of the education quality? There is no single silver bullet. We are so, so bad, in both school education, college education. I don't think there's a single answer, but certainly it helps. Technology is one enabler. Yesterday I was listening to a podcast by a private company. I was so thrilled. I was so thrilled that they got it right. They understood the crisis of school education. They're doing everything right and all power to their level. I want a hundred such companies to grow on a scale to to match India's needs. We desperately need that for profit, non-profit, I don't care what it is. The children of India should get their best. Similarly, in higher education, there's no one single answer. And our notion that if only you put some more money, and anyway, the money you put in a miniscule for higher education and R&D, a hundred crores will not make a great university in today's world. And even if you put a hundred crores or a thousand crores, it does not become a great university overnight because university is about a culture. It takes a generation or two. So given that context, we require everything. We require more investment, more focus on R&D, more incentives to, for doing it the right way, greater autonomy, like the, the current national education policy proposed, and greater market-oriented you know, choice and uh, competition for the parents, and uh, global exposure, both digital and real. Therefore, if foreign universities are allowed to set up shop here, and if we do it right, yeah, it will bring down the cost of education because even now, I think tens of thousands of Indian kids are going abroad for their undergraduation and post-graduation. Billions of dollars of money is flowing out of the country. Many families cannot afford it. So hopefully, if they do it in India, while well, still will be a little expensive, it will not be as expensive as abroad. At least the living cost will come down. And probably even the tuition costs can be brought down because Indian costs are a little less for the same quality. And others will learn from their best practices. But there's no single silver bullet. Uh, but I'm a great supporter that we have to adopt the best practices from others and we have to get the best uh, institutions into the country because there's so much of demand and we are relatively fond of English speaking, even if not many people speak good English or even good Telugu or Tamil, that's our tragedy. But we are more comfortable with English than many other non-English speaking countries. Therefore, it's easier for the British, American, Australian, uh, maybe New Zealand, other countries to establish shop here, the better universities. If we do it right, that certainly is one of the many steps we can take. But as I said, there's no single silver bullet. We must do whatever it takes to improve the quality of our education.